In college, I started an artistic fraternity called New Sig Mu. It was music, graphic, film, and business all working together at Full Sail University. And our only graphic guy was Case Windu, who was also a rapper and was in my rap group, The Freshman Crew, and was dope. Now, Casey is a senior graphic designer at a tech agency, and he's a total badass, and he's here in Florida. We're gonna film a bunch of content about branding, and I'm gonna teach him a little bit about video, and I'm super excited about about all of it. When I started this channel, Case Case has been the biggest supporter. He's been watching all the videos. He's been giving me feedback. And so while he's here, I figured I'd help the indies out by learning some key branding things. But also I figured I could use this as a platform to teach him a little bit about what I've learned with filming and also teach anyone out there who's interested about filming and, and what I've learned and how you can get started shooting cool videos. <laughs> I can't get you in focus, dude. You're an enigma, a shadow. Don't, <laughs> there he is. I got it. <laughs> What's up, dude? How's it going, man? Fantastic. I think a good starting place for you to learn a little bit more about videography is proper exposure. Getting the proper exposure in a shot is super important. How exposed or how lit things are, right? And we want to get the right amount of litness, all the highlights detail and all the shadows detail so that every part of the image has rich detail and you can see a lot. So I think the great way to start here is with a histogram. Histogram is a way to measure exposure. It's usually divided into four quadrants, but sometimes it's just like a little square and that's all you got to work with. And then in this, this is absolute black, like black, 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 and this is absolute white. And then here is your waveform. It's all the lumosity or brightness information in your image. Now this is a well exposed shot. This is called expose to the right. It's used mostly in controlled scenarios where you can really control your exposure. You have a lot of options. So ultimately, if the waveform goes all the way to black without getting to zero, that means you've got some absolute black in the shot, meaning some of the detail in the shadows is being cut off. Same thing with the white. If you are all the way here, you're clipping on the whites, meaning some parts of the image are absolute white. Now, if you've got the sun in your image, that's not so bad. Like the sun's supposed to be absolute white when you look at it. Properly exposing a shot is super important so that, you know, even if say you want to clip the whites, you have that choice in post. You can make that choice later by properly exposing. It's a range, right? So the more room you have here, the more opportunity you have to create a rich, range of colors in the shadow. Similarly, the more space you have here, the more room you have for highlight roll off. So like the bright white point, it's a gradient. And you're a graphic designer, so you understand gradients. Love me some gradients. Right, so that's kind of exposing to favor the highlights. I'm giving myself enough room there to have highlight roll off. So there's like five things you can do to change how an image is exposed. The first is obviously change the lighting. Our second option is a pretty bad one. It's called ISO, which stands for International Standards Organization. ISO was used to determine the sensitivity of film to light, but it's not used that way anymore because all the sensors are digital. So in film, it's still like that, but in, in a normal scenario with a digital camera, it's not. Instead, you have a base ISO, but that's what how the sensor was built. So when they made the sensor, they baked into it a certain sensitivity to light. And that's base ISO. Whenever you crank it above that, you're cranking the gain on the electrical signal, on the video signal, just like you crank the gain on a microphone. So you're actually introducing a crap ton of electrical noise. And that's why if you shoot with a camera that doesn't have good low light performance and you crank that ISO, the image just looks terrible. And so you typically want to use lighting and other tricks to stay at base ISO. Then you can change your shutter speed, okay? Now, in filming, your shutter speed should be double your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, which is what most film and a lot of cinematic TV shows are shot in, then you wanna shoot in 24p. If you're on video, like Always Sunny in Philadelphia or The Daily Show are shot in 30 frames per second. It's a little bit more lifelike. I like to shoot in 24p, which means I want my frame rate to be 1 48th of a second, double, 
right? If I was shooting in 30p, I'd want it to be 1 60th of a second. That looks normal. So shutter speed is actually how long the shutters open or how much time the sensor allows to pass before it says that's a frame. With a film camera, if you're, if you're at 400 ISO on a film camera and you wanna shoot night photography, it's very difficult. But if you do a long exposure or a shutter speed that's very low, like five seconds all the way up to a minute, you have that shutter open, letting light onto the film for a whole five seconds, which means more light photons can accumulate meaning you can get a proper exposure even though your film's at 400 ISO. If your shutter speed is super low, like two seconds, right? And you move in that two seconds, you get that blur, right? Per frame. A lot of time lapses are shot this way. I get a lot more motion blur. It's kind of dreamy, glossy, you know? It's, it's like I put a slight Gaussian blur on the whole image, right? If I'm shooting really high because the sensor's open for longer, more light. So I can have lower light if I'm shooting at a lower shutter speed. I can have less light, you know, by, by cranking the shutter speed. Have you ever seen Born Identity? Yeah. All the fight scenes are shot with crazy high shutter speed to look more jerky and like lifelike and weird, you know? So if I'm shooting, if I want to shoot 120 frames per second for slow motion, I'm at one over 240. So I have very low light. There's, I have to really work the exposure in all these other ways. Exposing with shutter speed is not common because people want to be able to control their look. Then we have ISO, shutter speed, and uh, aperture? aperture. Man, you should be teaching me this stuff. <laughs> well, I, I was going to ask what the difference between shutter speed and aperture so, is. So aperture is actually the, uh, the size of the hole in here. It's actually the, called the focusing pupil. It's not really the size of the hole. That's not the measurement. Um, there's a great video I'll link to right here uh, by Gerald Undone, who kind of explains like, no, it's not the size of the hole, but that has something to do with it. Okay. That's not a very reliable way to measure it, but it is. It's, it's it, if your aperture, which is measured in F number, so F stops or T number in cinema, T stops. F-stop is what you'll find on all these lenses and these cameras. This is an F2.8. That's an F2, but it's a little bit more wide open right now. The lower the F-stop, so like an F2, will let in more light because it can get bigger. An F, you know, 22 gets smaller, right? But just like all these things, F number isn't just exposure, <laughs> right? There's always, you know, trade-offs. So F number is also depth of field. Meaning, you know, if I'm shooting you at an f2.8, I can blur out that background because the depth of field is like, you know, two feet. So I can get you in focus, but nothing else. That has a great cinematic look. It's what everyone's after is those blurry backgrounds, right? So if I'm outside and my f number is at like 1.8, I'm probably blowing out all my highlights. So F number controls depth of field. F22, it's like everything's in focus. F1.8, very shallow. And I have to really work my focus. That's why good autofocus is necessary for shallow depth of field, unless you're really great with manual focus. So if I'm outside and I wanna shoot at F1.8 for the look, for the blurry background, but I don't want my highlights to be blown out, I can use the fifth method, which is filters. I can slap what's called a neutral density filter on top of my lens. And that will, it's sunglasses for your camera, right? So you can get that same shallow depth of field, blurry background, but you can shoot outside in broad daylight. There's also variable ND filters, which you can twist, but like as you twist it, it gets darker. These are the five ways to change your exposure. So when we want to expose to the right on the histogram or we want to change our zebra patterns, these are the different methods we can use to do so. And that's, that's pretty much like, that's enough to get you started filming, to be honest with you. The only thing I'll say after that is picture profile. If we want to get more juice out of our exposure, we want more options in post, we can shoot with a certain picture profile called log. Log is removing a lot of the contrast information from the image. So it's almost a contrastless image and the colors are very muted so that we have, like if you think about it, log on a histogram looks like this. Mad space on each side. Now we're sacrificing a little bit of color depth and color information to do that, 
but we're getting so much more in highlight roll off and, and shadow detail. That's why a lot of people like to shoot in log. If you shoot raw, you not only have access to a contrastless image that can be manipulated to great detail, but you also have access to change your ISO in post and change your aperture in post if you want to. Every camera comes with many different picture profiles. People like Canon cameras because their picture profiles look great out of the camera. And even when manipulated, they look really good. Gerald Undone, and I'll put the video for this right here, he explained this to me as the skies are really beautiful on a Canon because the blue is being shifted a little bit green. It's like a cyan. And as a result, the greens are a little bit duller, but that makes the skies pop a little bit more. There's picture profiles baked in. When you're shooting in log, you're not using any picture, or you're using minimal change to the image. You shoot in log if you wanna rescue the maximum amount. If you have access to raw, like with a high-end cinema camera, you can do even more. And if you wanna save time in post and you like certain picture profiles, just use you know, a dope picture profile like Canon's. So, do you feel like you're ready to shoot some vlogs now, Jared? Yeah, getting there. I, I was curious um, if there's an order in which you recommend tweaking this stuff. Like, yeah. Because you'd said, like, ISO is number two on the list, but I think you said that's kind of like you, oh, a no, bad yeah. way to yeah, definitely a bad change way. your exposure. So what do you, like, what's the... Definitely. I mean, yeah. I'm assuming lighting is first. Lighting is number one in a studio environment. Filters are number one in a non-studio environment. With the assumption being that usually in a studio environment, you need to increase the light because you're inside. And usually outside, you need to decrease the light. But they are specific to it. So like lighting will only help you if there's not enough. Filters will only help you if there's too much. These are the preferred methods. After that, I would go aperture, then depending on the camera ISO, and then shutter speed. Any awesome. other questions? I think that's it. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna equip you with this camera, which has in-body image stabilization.